In this segment, we're going to use some of the things that we've learned throughout the course and apply it to the curious case of exploding cars. Now, we all know exploding cars from Hollywood movies, but we'll see in this segment that applying our chemical knowledge to this problem, we're actually able to say something significant about whether or not an explosion is likely to happen. Now, what is an explosion, really? It is a combustion reaction. It's the combustion of gasoline. Gasoline is mostly comprised of heptane. So the combustion reaction is the interaction of heptane with oxygen to form CO2 and H2O. Now, for an explosion to happen, we need the right proportions of the reactants, oxygen and heptane. They need to be in the right proportions, otherwise they have no chance of interacting vigorously all at once. We need a few more ingredients to do this calculation. The first one is the volume of the gas tank. That's about 14 gallons or 53 liters. We will also need the density of heptane. That is 0.684 grams per milliliter. The density of oxygen is 0.0446 moles per liter. Now, here is the reaction once again. What are the proportions that I need for the reaction to be complete? Well, if you look at the chemical equation, you'll find that you need 11 moles of oxygen for each one mole of heptane. So the mole ratio is 11. Now let's look at case number one. Case number one is when I have a full tank of gasoline. That means 53 liters of heptane. How many moles is that? That means I have to do some conversions. Convert from volume in liters to number of moles. If I multiply volume by density, I get mass. And if I then divide mass by the molar mass, I find the number of moles. Now note here that the molar mass is expressed in kilograms per moles. That's because the density here is expressed in kilograms per liter. I find a total of 3.6 times 10 to the second moles of heptane. Now how many moles of oxygen do I have in this case? It's zero. I have no oxygen. The entire tank is occupied by heptane. That means there is no explosion happening because there's no oxygen to interact with. So in the case of a full tank of gasoline, certainly there will be no explosion. Let's look at case number two. Case number two is when I have only one liter of heptane. We've seen from the previous case that we need less heptane and more oxygen. So one liter of heptane, how many moles of heptane is that? Well, I perform the same kind of calculation. I convert the volume to mass by multiplying volume with density, and then dividing by the molar mass, and I find 6.8 moles of heptane. How many moles of oxygen do I have in this case? Well, one liter was occupied by heptane. That means 53 minus one is 52 liters is left for oxygen. So I have 52 liters of oxygen. How many moles of oxygen is that? Well, I multiply by the density. Look at the units right here. This multiplication gives me moles immediately. I find 2.3 moles of oxygen. So I have 6.8 moles of heptane, 2.3 moles of oxygen. What is the ratio between the two? That is 2.3 divided by 6.8, and that is 0.33. Is that enough? No, it's not. I need a ratio of 11. It's not even close. That means also in this case, I don't have the conditions for creating an explosion. I still need more oxygen and less heptane. So let's look at case number three. In case number three, we have a tank that is almost completely empty. There's no heptane in there, only oxygen. So let's say I have 53 liters of oxygen. How many moles of oxygen is that? Okay, we multiply by the density and find 2.4 moles of oxygen. Now, how many moles of heptane do I need? And given the amount of heptanes that I need to create conditions for an explosion, what is the volume of heptane that I need? So let's take this 2.4 of oxygen and convert it into the number of moles that I need for heptane. So what I do is, I multiply it by the mole ratio. I put oxygen at the bottom and heptane on top of this ratio, so I convert number of moles of oxygen into number of moles of heptane. 
Then, if I multiply that by the molar mass of heptane, I have the total amount of mass of heptane. Then, if I divide it by the density, I find the volume of heptane. I arrive at 32 milliliters of heptane. Now, 32 milliliters is not a lot. It is one-eighth of a cup. So, contrary to conventional wisdom, which states that you need a full tank of gasoline for an explosion, we find exactly the opposite. You only need a little bit of heptane to create the conditions for an explosion.